to reach his mind and raise him from what? From a dead level, a horizontal level, to an upright position. And what was we raised on? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, may Allah forgive him his sins and ground the paradise. Even before him, Farad Muhammad King was strapped. He said, the white man is devil, you are God. Some strong stuff. Some strong talk. What did that do? It shook us up a little bit. It didn't raise us from the grave. It gave us some ideas and it shook us up. Then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came and established schools of learning. Established institutions. But that didn't raise us, it gave us some motivation, it gave us some courage, some incentive. But what has raised us? If we bear witness, we will, be, we will bear witness that as they are raised on the five pillars, or on the five points of fellowship, there was the five pillars of Islam that has raised us up. We are raised up on the five pillars of Islam. It is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. It is the five prayers that really raise us up. So if we relate that, we can see that what happened? He was raised on the five points of fellowship, which alludes to the five senses. And it was a word, a substitute word, they whispered in his ear, called Mahabon. And Mahabon has several meanings. But one of the meanings, and in addition to uh, representing three men, is marrow in the bone. And marrow in the bone is associated with mercy in the bone, or mercy in the heart. And it said, threw their hands up and said, was there any, oh God, my Lord, was there no help for the will's son? Oh God, my Lord, I fear that the master's word is forever lost. Mahabon, was there any mercy in these people's heart to kill the master builder like this? Were there any mercy in their heart to kill the ancient builders of the pyramid like this? To kill the ancient builders of the Sphinx? To kill the people who brought geometry to the world? Trigonometry, chemistry to the world? Was there any mercy in their heart to strip these people of what they had like this? Was there any mercy in their heart? So they thought, Mahabon, was there any mercy in their heart? Maybe there was no mercy in their heart. But we believe that Allah, as He says in the Quran, is the beneficent and the mercy. And we know that Allah showed mercy and bring to us the Quran and bring to us our religion of our Islam and bring to us some wisdom and bring to us some light and some understanding. And we pray to Allah that we can continue and our efforts, our good efforts, and we can grow more into light, into wisdom, and into understanding. And on that, I'd like to greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum, and may we be returned. All right, Assalamu alaikum. I'd just like to make a few of points, and then maybe we can open for question and answer. Um, as, I, as I began by saying that a large beckons us to travel through the land and see what was the fate of those who rejected, travel to the land and learn. One thing you find, again, as I say about traveling, and Masons call themselves travelers, is as you travel down the roads, you see what you call lounging, right? Uh, it's a temporary place of stay or rest. You're traveling down the road and you're not there to stay all night or any long length of time, just to kind of freshen up. So now Masons call themselves travelers, and they travel also to a lodge, <coughs> lounging, lodging. So this is so suggest that the stay in the lodge is not for a lifetime; it's just a temporary stopover. It's only a temporary place for refreshing and getting a few things together. But you shouldn't confine yourself to the lodge because you're traveling. So, and we shouldn't confine ourselves in any particular place, so to speak, because the lodge is the earth is spacious. And its whole earth is not skid. So when you're traveling, don't just stay in the lodge and lounge and 
learn a few things, you have to keep going. So there's a lot of earth and space. In fact, we are part, as I heard Imam Muhammad point out, the cosmic universe. But the ancient wise themselves referred to it as the macrocosm and the microcosm. Out. The cosmic universe. But the ancient wise themselves referred to it as the macrocosm and the microcosm. And it was one and the same. One was an expression of the other. So we are a part or citizens of the entire universe. They make a big deal about being an American. Well, we should be even prouder about being citizens of the entire universe that God created. And we should feel special and feel we can travel and go where we want on God's earth. He warns us that the creation is bigger than ourselves, so we don't get big-headed. But we are the best in the creation, the Khalifa, after the creation, then comes man. And the best among men, we believe, is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the best of creation. So we just want to make that point to know that we should not keep our minds confined in a particular temple, church, lodge, mosque, but we should free our minds to seek knowledge, to seek wisdom, to break the confines, the restrictions that this world has put on us. And if we see ourselves in that cosmic or universal view, then there will be nothing that this world and anyone else can do with the suppression, the slavery would be over. And Allah tells in the Quran that he made man in the best mold, of the best character, of the best. He created him in nobility. So if we read that and accept that, then if someone tells us we're inferior or we're slave or treat us in that way, it wouldn't matter because we accept God's word. And we accept that first and foremost. And we try to unite and work with those that believe in God. And our book tells what we believe, what names you call him, Rahim or Rahman. He's still the creator of all things. Although we know his proper name is Allah. But we have some common terms that we can work with. Now we just made my group prayer. And it was the sunset prayer. Or my group meaning the West. And it consists of basically three rakahs. Now... The West has been considered as the place, as we say, where the sun sets and has been classified as a place of materialism and darkness. The North is the darker corner, but nevertheless, the West has been classified that way too as the sun sets. So at this time of the sun beginning to set, we make three rakas, three prayers. Because we want to be Prepared. We don't want the light to go out in our being. We want to always be prepared in our physical nature, our rational and spiritual being. We want to be prepared on all three levels. Now the triangle, and we're talking about signs again in the creation. And this has been an early figure that was used in ancient times that they used as a symbol of the deity of God. Because it is the first figure that can be drawn, a perfect figure that can be drawn with straight lines. And it actually has no, no breaks. A triangle, you don't have to, I mean, it goes like this, like this, and like this. So it's like an inf infinity, almost like the circle. And the three here, before the confusion with Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it alluded to the physical, mental, and spiritual aspect in man. But here in ancient times and in the Masonic teaching also, it alludes to several things, but it represented attributes of the Creator. God, the Creator, the Provider, and the Destroyer. So it had those three aspects, but it also represented
had Isis, Osiris, and they had Horus in ancient Egypt. These were the Trinity as they had it then. But not God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It was a story of mythology, of a threefold aspect in man and in certain aspects of creation. So the triangle, and again, I'm going back to the dollar bill because I want to relate it to things that we see every day. The dollar bill has that pyramid. And on the pyramid, there's an eye. And the eye is in a triangle, capstone. Anyway, it rays. And it is telling us that these rays tell us that we should not just be able to see, but we should be able to see with light, with knowledge. But not only see physically, but see rationally. And see spiritually. See beyond the surface. And our vision, if you see the headlights on a car, they take it after the signs and creation, after the eye of man. And our vision goes out in a triangular form. It goes out and it cuts what it's trying to bring into focus. So it would be like three-dimensional in a sense because it would go out like this. And whatever is here, it cuts from here to here. What we see what is here, what is here, and, and uh, the peripheral bit. So our vision is triangular. But we have two eyes, but one vision. And we don't know that we see three things, but it works in that way. So it can let us know that we should. And as I mentioned, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked to read three times. We also know that in the Bible says there is a book of seven seals. And they said they took it to one man. And they said, will you read this? He said, I cannot, it is sealed. He took it to another man. He said, can you read this? I cannot, it is sealed. And he took it to a third man, it was sealed. And we know that our holy book, the Quran, that 